Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do, again, our daily technical analysis update of commodities. I'll take a look at uh, dollar, 10, 30 year yields, work our way through precious metals and all the commodities I follow. I'm gonna give you my financial opinions. And if you guys need any help in this commodity uh, bull market, go ahead and sign up for the finding-value.com platinum membership. Use the word discount in the coupon code. All right, so let's take a look at the dollar and work our way through. <clears throat> the DXY, I still think this looks kind of weak. Uh, and then that's just me looking at it real quick here. Lots of selling pressure right through here. Those big forceful selling pressure days. These big three candlesticks stick out to me. Stick number one, two, and three. Those are the big guys. Now, what, what kind of bounce have we had with the buyers? Not much of a bounce, and then we get another selling pressure. Not much of a bounce, and we'll probably still head lower over time. Uh, maybe it's got a little left in the tank to the upside, but more than likely, we're going to grind lower. That's what I'm seeing with the candlesticks and the momentum and the trend line break all adding up to potential lower dollar. Uh, that lines up very well with the middle of the last commodities bull market as well, uh, beginning to middle. So 25%, 30% into this bull market, we had an increasing. This is the beginning of the bull market. We had a declining dollar, an increasing dollar, and then I think we're going to head lower, just like uh, last commodity bull market. The 10-year yield heading up today, heading up. Now, is this going to put in some sort of topping pattern? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we had a little bit more uh, yield. I'll call it higher yield pressure is what I'll call it. But it does look like it wants to try to go higher here. Uh, kind of a strong closing. I wouldn't say it's... I still think that this potentially will go lower. Uh, but we very well could work our way back up and turn around at any of these types of points here. This would be kind of like a double top, somewhere close to that guy, and then somewhere close to this guy. Somewhere in that range is what I'm seeing. <clears throat> bond prices, uh, obviously yields going higher, bond prices go lower. They're inversely correlated. Uh, we have it going lower. Could say that this is kind of breaking this uptrend, but we'll see where it goes. I'm, I don't have any anything in bonds or yields or anything like that. I'm not really playing anything in this in this way, but... This is what it looks like from a, a bigger picture view. <clears throat> We've got kind of this shoulder, head, shoulder, and, and then the fallout. And what I'm kind of looking for here <clears throat> is if, if, if oil goes up, I think yields will go up with it. If oil remains somewhat low, then I think yields will remain somewhat low. So I think that's really what the big driver is, uh, is oil and the perception of what oil uh, is going to do in the future. Uh, TYX also heading higher today, up 1.36%. So we've got this nice big pullback. It looks pretty strong, like it wants to go higher here. Uh, again, I'm not really playing anything. We do have a lot of downside momentum. So this could be a short-lived little rally before it turns and heads lower. Maybe this is a wave one on a bigger, big picture view where we actually had higher. Um, difficult to say. And I'm just going to wait and see what oil does and kind of look at that market and what gold and silver and all these other markets do. Uh, but right now, strong today. It ended strong. Looks good. And then that yield is just moving sideways at a very low level. And when you look at this, generally, I'm just going to say in general, you know, generally speaking, you would have done very well getting into precious metals kind of at these beginning of these markets here. Um, precious, so yeah, precious metals do well when the ratio goes up. So that that's typically where it looks good. We're getting a very low reading here on this ratio. And usually, I'm not saying all the time, but usually when this ratio goes up, think of the yield curve uninverting or normalizing at some point. Uh, precious metals do uh, well under those conditions. Now, is this pullback completely done? Good question. Um, <clears throat> we could see oil because I do see lots of strength potentially in oil coming ahead of us. 
This very well could go down, but it's still at a low level, and we're seeing the inventories deplete in precious metals. Uh, so I'm comfortable buying where they're at. But that's that's my opinion there. Uh, the CRB index looking stronger today. Again, this is highly tied to oil, uh, but we we've broken out of this pattern to the upside. There's our breakout. We do a, a breakout, a retest, and now we want to break this high here at 288. If we can close above 288, I think we're off to the races. So we have a little work to do ahead of us. It doesn't mean that we're free and clear, but it does look a lot better uh, getting a little bit more buying pressure in today. And we're not breaking down. We haven't broken any trend lines or anything like that. The CRB to S&P 500 also outperforming for commodities. Uh, it's up 2%. We're getting a nice good bounce in relationship to the overall markets. Notice that commodities were strong. We had yields that were higher. Dollar basically flattish. And the overall market's weaker today. So we're heading higher in this ratio. Uh, gold also heading slightly higher. Uh, and that's actually quite good strength for gold, silver, and platinum today. Uh, we had stronger dollars, stronger yields. And that's usually a mix for not as good precious metals performance with some of these monetary metals. But it's hanging in there today and doing quite well. Uh, up today, $7.4% for gold. Silver up 1.4%. We still want to break out of all this resistance garbage ahead of us, you know, right on, right on top of us. And platinum doing very well, up 1.37%. Still looking uh, mightily strong. I wish we had a little bit stronger closing, but you know what? It still looks good. Uh, big picture view, it looks very good, where we could potentially head on higher to the promised land of higher numbers. XEU to gold ratio, the gold and silver miners outperforming gold itself. Uh, pretty good outperformance uh, today. Looking at the daily candlesticks, there we are. We are above all of this support level. I think that we will trend higher. The big picture view, we need to break this big downtrend line for what I consider to be a need to break this line for happiness for all those holders. If we can get up above that and really start to move, Man, that's going to be a vast outperformance of the gold and silver mining companies. So I think that the gold and silver mining companies look excellent from a valuation standpoint. It's just, are we going to break soon? That question, I don't know yet. We have not broken out. We are still consolidating. I would have said we were good to go to break here, but that just didn't happen. GDX up 3% today, looking at that itself, <clears throat> I think it looks pretty dang strong uh, from a candlestick perspective. If we can get it to load here, uh, we're looking good up above. So we've got kind of the, the, the downward trend line, the sideways movement, and then usually what follows is an upward move, uh, putting in this type of bottom. Uh, so it looks good. And so does SILJ up 2.8% above the support level. Everything looks good for potentially a move higher. Uh, remember, we're playing with statistical probabilities. We're not playing with for sure outcomes. Keep that in mind. This is all statistics. It's breaking levels, breaking supports, uh, and looking at the herd mentality and looking at potentially somewhat money flows when you start looking at some of these things. Crude oil. <clears throat> I thought crude oil was um, breaking its support line and heading lower. Everyone told me that this was it. We're going to go lower. But it reversed and we're moving higher. What the heck is happening? Uh, our inventories, I'll say, our inventories are priced where they're supposed to be if you use commercial inventories. If you look at what, 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 what had to happen in the destruction of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve inventories to keep the price level where this is at today, uh, they've had to go to pretty extreme measures, and that's with China in lockdown, and that's also with Russia potentially peaking out in its production. So I'm very curious to see what happens when the Strategic Petroleum Reserves ends, whenever that may be, and what happens to this price. So I'm very much bullish on crude oil. Short term, though, we could have some volatility. 
Uh, put on your volatility pants, get ready, because it's going to be volatile. Natural gas, slightly higher today, up 0.8%. Uh, this guy looks pretty strong. We had this kind of squeezing up session and broke out of it to the upside. It looks like we're squeezing again and potentially could break to the upside if the buyers want to push it. Uh, so natural gas, we're in the winter. We're consuming natural gas. Looks good. XOP, yeah, you know me. Rolling on slightly higher today, but we're still above that, that support line. Everything looks all right. We're just chilling out, resting. Uh, OIH doing the same thing, up 2.33%. And when looking at this chart, uh, I like the big picture view here. I take the big picture view on almost everything. Uh, we've broken this to the upside. We're getting that bloody nose. The bloody nose is a continuation pattern to the upside. Is this pullback done yet? I don't know. I don't like trying to predict or do anything in the short term. I would like taking the big picture view. Uh, and, and saying, look, we've broken out of this. We could pull back further. It could very well could. Uh, but overall, I think we're going we're gonna to grind higher uh, over time. So whether it grinds higher this second or if we get a larger pullback, I'm not going to be able to tell you that. Um, I was buying when I was supposed to be buying when it was cheap. It's still cheap. So I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Then you got to hold on and ride it. Ride this bucking bull. Uh, I said bucking there. Okay. The Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, we are heading right. We're, we're basically grinding on this support level. We've got lots of support uh, in this general vicinity all through here, and we're sitting on top of it. <clears throat> so that's what I'm seeing uh, for the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. We're right on support. Uh, URNM, a little bit of an update today. Let's get off logarithmic. We're still above the support level. Um, like I said before, it's a battle here. It's a battle between the buyers and sellers. Good buying pressure here which turned into good selling pressure there. And it's just trading back and forth with the buyers and the sellers. Uh, what I like to see is big buying pressure with small little pullbacks with big candle, big up candlesticks. Uh, we have not seen that. <clears throat> we're, we're just battling back and forth. And looking at the overall kind of commodity markets, I do think that uranium is going to break to the upside. Could we have a little washout where everybody gets scared you know, puts a load in their pants because they're all scared and then and then reverse it higher. We call it a false breakdown or a false breakout. That could happen. Be prepared for it. Be prepared and then watch for the turn. If we get down here, watch for strength and buy into that strength is what I do. That's my, my strategy. If it were to do that. Tan down a little bit, 1.2%. Uh, it is moving around up here, but again, I like taking the big picture view. The, the chart pattern looks good to move higher. I know that there's constraints in the system for TAN to grow, for solar and wind and all these other ones. Um, I prefer to play it with the minerals and energy itself, like oil and other fossil fuels or uranium, uh, but this does look good from a charting perspective. COPX ripping it 3.23 percent uh looking very strong from the global copper miners etf uh, a lot of the diversified miners did very well today and this looks good to go higher um the reason i say that is i look at these candlesticks in here and there's not much large selling pressure candlesticks this is a lot of large selling pressure candlesticks over here then it slowly changed into the bigger buying candlesticks and it's big buying candlesticks in here the big green up candlesticks that I'm looking for and smaller red candlesticks. So I think that this will work its way higher. Uh, we've got a downtrend line, like downtrend sideways, and then the move higher. I think it looks fantastic. Looks really good. Uh, LIT, this thing's just grinding sideways. I don't see a clear direction yet. We are getting a little bit of the green army coming in on this side, not much selling pressure. So I do favor this to the upside. Um, but I, again, I don't know as much about the lithium ETF, but I do favor this to move to the upside eventually. Uh, looking at rare earths, uh, this is another one that's bumping and grinding sideways. Um, big picture view, though, I think it still looks really good. We're right on support. And eventually, I think we will work our way higher with the rare earth metals. 
The S&P 500 slightly down today, down 0.16%. Let's zoom in there and get a better read on the daily candlesticks to see what exactly the S&P 500 is doing. <clears throat> and hopefully this thing loads uh, so we can take a look because it looks like we've got a little bit of squeezing up here. Now, you can draw this a few ways. You can draw it from the bottoms. You can draw it. You can kind of pick and choose some of these areas. We are at a support level right where we're at. If we see a large selling pressure move lower, which I am expecting, uh, we could see this thing kind of drop to the downside here for the S&P 500. We're seeing higher dollar. We're seeing higher yields. And this usually uh, goes inversely of those. So I expect this to, to drop here. Uh, that's the probability when looking at it. And I also think the same thing's going to happen with the composite index here that we're looking at. And there it is, slightly lower. I mean, it doesn't look horrible. I don't see too much selling pressure in here on this right-hand side. And I do think the buyers are winning out. So depends on what the market conditions are. Higher, uh, higher yields, higher dollar. I think this will grind lower. EEM uh, rocketing higher today, up 2.15%. We did have a slightly higher DXY. Uh, looks like we broke out of this little kind of consolidation pattern to the upside. We might do a little retest and then a move on higher. So that looks good. Uh, XHB <clears throat> holding strong in relationship to higher yields, higher dollar. So 0.67%. That's a bullish piercing. I think it's going to work its way higher for. Uh, XHB. It actually looks pretty good. Looking at Moo, uh, up 0.6%. Moo is the agribusiness ETF. It still looks good. We may have a little bit, you know, I'm just seeing if this thing's squeezing up a little bit or not, uh, but we'll watch it. We'll see what happens, uh, but still looking all right. Copper up strong today, 1%. Remember, we broke the downtrend in copper. Uh, so I am very much positive on copper and the diversified miners uh, to go higher. So that's looking good. Uh, lumber also just tracking sideways. Not much movement there. Uh, we'll skip along to uh, iron ore. Iron ore is a tough one to read because it's all broken up in just little candlesticks here. It's got a falling wedge and we're still inside the wedge. It's up 0.32%. Uh, aluminum grinding sideways. I I think a I think aluminum is going to do great things out in the future. Uh, there's going to be shortages of, in aluminum, and there are ways to play that. I've got a player or two <clears throat> in uh, the on the on the website. <clears throat> if you guys are interested, just ask about it. And then Baltic Dry Index. We are still squeezing up. We're getting close to a breakout in a falling wedge. I think that the Baltic Dry Index will move higher um, with this chart pattern alignment. We've got one, two hump, and a third hump that's completing right now, and then I'm looking for a break to the upside. Newcastle Coal, I know um, people were seeing how far that had pulled back. We are up 5%. Nice, big jolt higher. Uh, I think that we are going higher in coal based off of previous chart patterns that I've seen before. Um, I don't know if it's going to do it immediately, but uh, coal's done very well. We're in an energy crisis. I still think that we are in a bull market, and we're just getting a little bit of a consolidation uh, at, this, at this time. Ethereum working higher, 4.5%. This looks like it's trying to put in a bottom. We've got a nice, good bullish candlestick today. Uh, we'll see if we get follow through the rest of the week. Uh, Bitcoin in the same situation. Bullish uh, trading today, kind of almost a bullish engulfing. Uh, I do think that this is going to go higher for both Ethereum and Bitcoin. So that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a good day. And again, you know, I, I like the precious metals. I think they look really good. I think they're cheap. Uh, I, I do think, um, you know, the physical metals, and I do like some of the mining companies uh, and royalty companies. I think oil's tr tr it's trying to turn around here. We'll see if we can get some traction. That one seems to be, well, they're all, they're all probably pretty manipulated at some point. But um, yeah, I, I think the commodity sectors look really good. Copper's looking really strong. Uh, uranium needs to get some big 
some big buy candlesticks in there. Show me you guys are alive in the uranium. Um, in the in the comments section, show me alive. Let's go uranium. Put something with uranium content. We need this thing to get pumped, uh, pumped up. I want to see some buying pressure in it. Uh, right now, it's looking a little bit on the weaker side. We're just kind of moving sideways with the buyers and sellers uh, dueling out. I want to see some buying pressure in there and get me more convinced that this thing's ready to break. Uh, if you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Subscribe to the website if you like. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.